Un, deux tests. Um, hi everyone, thanks for joining <laughs> our, our wait, wait until the end, uh, please. Um, thanks for joining uh, our session on our uh, experience uh, sharing uh, on the implementation of the Odoo Suite. Um, so I'm Max, the head of uh, the IT uh, department within the, the uh, Ego Group, and this is Evelyn, uh, the project manager leading the, um, the Odoo implementation. Hello. So we'll start with a, a short uh, movie introducing a bit um, the company and uh, the, the context uh, around the Odoo implementation before we start with the concrete stuff. So let's start with the, the movie. Welcome to Ego. My name is Frédéric Tamigno. Ego is uh, actually a leading brand in the kitchen retail business, Belgian brand. We are actually selling, designing, installing, fitting every product where you can have some made to measure a solution. We had a, a very complex IT landscape with many different applications, many different softwares, a lot of integration. Uh, with data structure that was not consistent between each other. So all these employees need to work together around the customer. And the issue is that they are working at different places, could be in the shop, in the truck, at the customer house. It's a different timing in the process. So the whole should work together. To actually do that, they need to rely on a strong ERP, CRM solution to be sure that we don't need to ask two times an information and data to the customer. So that's why we decided to go for this crazy project. We wanted the, an application suite that would fulfill all the different uh, companies' jobs, going from human resources to accounting to operations, warehouse management, customer care, but also the sales associate, and last but not least, the training department. We really wanted to move from a, from a transactional ERP, classic ERP, to a tool that can actually help the employee to work on a better way. And uh, to do that, it needs to be simple. And that kind of simplicity, we found it with Adoo. So far, the main differences that we see is related to efficiency. It's much more easy to track uh, performances of uh, our sales associates, of our stores, and we have, I would say, a better data synchronization. So we have proper data from the customer data to the project data. The, the employees are quite happy with the tool and it makes easier to, to follow the sales, to follow the leads. And we see also that all the communication that we can embed it in the tool is a very strong asset uh, from Odoo. En tant que conseiller commercial, la plus-value de Odoo, c'est de pouvoir euh, centraliser toutes les demandes de nos clients et de ne pouvoir rater aucune opportunité, voire en temps et en or, quand rappeler, quand mesurer, donc vraiment avoir un suivi de notre flux de, de vente euh, jusqu'à la comptabilité, jusqu'à la livraison, jusqu'à la, à la pause. Grâce à l'outil Odoo, euh, ça nous simplifie la vie du suivi client, donc de la création jusqu'à l'aboutissement du projet. S'il fait une demande en ligne, on reçoit une notification et à partir de ce moment-là, on peut ensemble déjà convenir d'un rendez-vous. Lorsque le client vient en magasin, on choisit ensemble que ce soit les façades, le plan de travail euh, pour aboutir à son projet. Ensuite, grâce à ça, euh, le logiciel nous permet de remettre un devis avec le logiciel 3D très détaillé, donc on a le, le dessin technique de chaque meuble avec le ferrage. Et ça, je pense que c'est une plus-value par rapport à d'autres logiciels qui ne l'intègrent pas. Après le passage du client en, en point de vente, il y a directement une planification de tâches dans les 7 jours qui sont automatisés avec une to-do. Souvent, les clients se décident très tardivement. Donc, on les fait signer électroniquement et après, on peut les faire revenir plus tard pour peaufiner le projet tout en gardant euh, l'aspect promotionnel sans pression. Après signature avec le client, euh, on doit assigner un monteur au projet du client, donc en fonction des affinités, du code postal ou autre. Et ça nous permet de centraliser toutes ces informations-là. Et en quelques clics, on arrive à attribuer un monteur. Il a les plans techniques qui lui sont envoyés et qui sont envoyés aussi au client. 
et alors à partir de ce moment-là, tout est intégré, je ne dois pas chercher dans plusieurs logiciels telle ou telle donnée, tout est en une seule plateforme. Ensuite, euh, le dossier est transmis à nos gestionnaires qui gèrent euh, tout ceci en interne, donc elles savent commander la cuisine, elles ont les plans de mesurage, elles ont le devis signé, donc il y a toujours une intégration avec le logiciel et les gestionnaires qui va permettre euh, d'avoir un bon suivi de la livraison jusqu'à la pause de la cuisine. So I think that, that, that gave you um, a good insight on the, on the company. Um, maybe just to, to, to complete a bit what has been presented here, uh, Ego is a relatively a young brand, so it has been created 15 years ago. Uh, it's now operating in six countries, so the initial market was mostly uh, Belgium and Luxembourg. But the boundaries have been uh, recently extended, first of all, to Spain, where we now operate a network of 12 stores. Um, then we, we opened uh, stores in Africa, which is the first store that has been opened in Senegal. And now even more recently, um, we have new stores in the Middle East um, with openings in Saudi Arabia and in Qatar, which is really the market where we are uh, focusing right now. Um, to put that in, in context, this represents approximately 72 stores, um, in, uh, which makes us to a turnover of approximately 170 million a year. That represents 20,000 projects sold, uh, installed and, and fitted uh, on a yearly basis. Um, Ego is really known uh, as a kitchen retailer, uh, as a kitchen brand, uh, and now really the strategy is moving from being known as a kitchen retailer to basically uh, a retailer that offers a solution for each and every space within the house. So we now also offer a solution for the dining room, the living room, the bedroom, the bathroom. Um, but as you can see on the, the, the slide, we also have wardrobe solution that you can basically put um, wherever you want in, in the house. Um, so this is a bit the, the agenda we want to, to bring you through uh, during today's session. So first of all, is a quick recap of the customer journey. So what does it represent from a customer? How do, does he um, leave uh, a project uh, um, with Ego? Um, then maybe a quick check on basically how did we want to, how did we decide to map our digital transformation to support that the best way we can? And then more concrete stuff uh, on, on that uh, digital transformation. What has been already implemented in Odoo? Uh, we will show you some, some features. We cannot be exhaustive in such a short time frame, but you will see some, uh, some flavors of it. And what are we working on? Because we are on a, on a multi-year uh, uh, journey and implementation. Um, so the customer journey in a nutshell, um, it's quite, the, the first thing is we want every, uh, and I will take the Belgian example, uh, any uh, Belgian person who consider purchasing a new kitchen to know about Ego. So ideally, the marketing uh, has done its job already, and when you are in such uh, a purchase decision, you will uh, think about Ego. Otherwise, we need to be uh, uh, definitely visible on the internet so that you will think about, I'm going to cross the door of a showroom. Um, if everything uh, then uh, uh, happens, you will enter the showroom, meet one of our sales associates, and you will design your project, so it will be tailored on your location, on your needs, and you will end up with a quote. That part is still relatively easy. Then comes the execution phase, which is something that's very uh, particular in our business that takes on average, so really on average, uh, four to five months to execute a project. So from the moment where you sign the quote and from the moment where the kitchen will be fitted at your place, it's uh, four to five months. And during that period of four to five months, there is a lot of actions that needs to be taken by different people from different departments. So you need to, to order, you need to check with the supplier that everything was okay, you need to um, check the quality of the project, you need to check the transport, it's then shipped to your location, you need to receive it, same goes for the appliances, then you need to plan the installation, check with the, the fitting team, do the aftercare action, etc. So really a long, long, long process. And when everything has been done correctly, because that's what we, we, we aim to, um, we expect a recommendation from the customer. And that's key for us, because two out of three customers that have purchased a Nego kitchen 
have entered the store because they get a recommendation from a previous Ego customer. So you really see how important it is for us. It's really um, the circle that we are uh, um, uh, looking at. Um, something that's very specific also to Ego is that most of the job of the company are internalized. Uh, you, you heard it in the video. But uh, uh, the logistic, which is the warehouse management and the transport, the customer care, the accounting department, human resources, um, all of this, the IT organization, all of this is internalized, which basically had a tremendous impact on our decision to choose Odoo versus other application because we had, I would say, solution for most of the uh, company associates. Um, so, basically, how did we turn that into, uh, how did we map that into our IT uh, uh, strategy to fulfill the business? So, we start from many different jobs, huh, which are all internalized, and which were based on, I would say, a best of breed landscape. So, one department has one application, okay? Which, then you can imagine, makes a lot of application to integrate and to interface with data that might not be. Um, or that might not contain the same level of granularity or uh, the, the exact same details. And um, we are looking at basically get recommendation from the customer. And we started by saying that, okay, how can we be good towards our customer if we are not, first of all, good between us? So we really want to make sure that, first of all, the entire organization during that execution phase can have the proper information, the right information, the relevant information at the right moment, so that we can be good internally, and then share the relevant information with the customer. So that's really uh, the, 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 the key point for us. We want to turn into being uh, 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 excellent in, uh, in operations. Um, the second thing is we really wanted something that was open to the ecosystem. And what do we mean by the ecosystem? First of all, it's our supplier, so whatever data encoding that they could do on our behalf. But it's also, I would say, the opening of the application suite of the landscape to external partners, uh, independent fitters, etc., so that we can get rid of all that paper stuff or communication by email and uh, make sure that everything can happen directly uh, within the tool. Um, last but not least, um, the thing is, when you have a landscape that's quite uh, um, made of different applications, um, we, we wanted to move to something that can bring by itself innovation and differi differentiation. So we don't expect the business to always come with the, the good idea on, OK, how could we improve our processes? How can we differentiate ourselves toward the, the customer? I really expect the IT organization, and, and in this case, Odoo as an IT provider, to come with good ideas to improve the business, to improve um, the operational excellence, to improve the, the processes. So that's key. We really wanted a partner that has, in the mindset, a constant um, a look for uh, improvement. Um, so where do we stand right now? So do you, you see the ID. We had different discussion, but uh, we have uh, finalized the first go live, with, which went uh, live uh, end of last year, uh, where basically we moved all the infrastructure, the retail, and I would say the procurement and marketing part, where we have implemented uh, 54 stores in two countries, um, two languages, uh, to Odoo. So all the sales application, all the sales associates are now using Odoo, and uh, Evelyn will, will demo you that. Um, important is uh, that that represents approximately 250 users at the moment of the go live, and we are already at 300 users, uh, which are now using uh, Odoo on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it was mostly the customer data, the project master data, the article master data that were uh, implemented in the tool, plus all the workflow supporting the sales associates. But now, Evelyn will give you a, um, some example and some highlights of what has been implemented. And again, I repeat, we cannot be exhaustive, so it's just uh, uh, an idea of what has been. So as you have seen, uh, so far we have all the data um, 
basically um, starting or initiating a customer journey with the customer data, with the project data, with the article master data, um, making the, the details of the, the customer project. Um, now in the second phase, the second go live that will happen on the 9th of uh, April, we are uh, basically bringing into Odoo all the departments uh, in charge of the execution phase, so the one that, uh, that lasts uh, for the five months, which means that the logistic uh, department, and again, both the warehouse management and the transport, so reception, uh, storage, and, uh, and transport, the customer care will also be um, uh, migrated to Odoo, and uh, last but not least, all the fitting departments. So we have internal fitters for direct actions. We have independent fitters uh, that go to the customer place for the, the fitting. All of these will be, um, uh, all of these persons will start to use Odoo. And why does it matter? Because that means for the, for the first time since the company creation, uh, each and every um, employee contributing to the project execution will benefit from the same data regarding the customer project and with the same level of details. So if, as a customer, you cross the door of the showroom, the sales associate will be able to tell you, okay, for your kitchen, the product has been received in the warehouse, but unfortunately, that appliance was missing, and the status for that missing appliance is that it has already been reordered, and it should be shipped to your place on the uh, 29th of uh, October. So it's really a game changer because First of all, all the information will be shared, but also with the level of details that's uh, really required for uh, each and every uh, associate. Um, we will also bring uh, 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 an important change is that actually all the transport uh, capacity was driven by the customer demand. So basically the customer would ask for a delivery date and we would um, cope with that, um, but that brings huge peak, which uh, make it, I would say, difficult to, to, to cope with, because you have some, some days a lot of requests and some days uh, uh, very few. And so we bring a capacity planning with slot management, so you have an overview of all the availabilities on a calendar per day, um, the remaining availabilities, and as soon as a customer chooses for a date, the, the remaining availability will decrease, and this allows us to, to smoothen and to flatten the, the delivery schedule. Um, and also very important change for us that will come with that uh, next release is the integration of the external fitters within, uh, within, our, uh, within our ERP. So uh, usually, uh, now it's still the case, if one external fitter goes to a customer location and fit the kitchen, he needs to fill in a paper report saying, okay, everything was okay, or I've had an issue while installing that particular uh, fixture, you need to reorder it, you need to scan it, to send it per email, someone needs to decode the PDF to re-encode the equivalent in the application, so you can imagine the nightmare to be uh, efficient in such a process. With Odoo, uh, now the fitters will go straight on the application, they can indicate real time when the fitting has been done, if it was complete, if something needs to be reordered. If something needs to be reordered, it will be able to do it based on the sales order details that you have seen in the, in the demo. So in terms of efficiency, that will be an absolute uh, um, game changer. Um, to, to, I would say to finalize, I would say our presentation before the eventual uh, question and answer. Um, here are the key takeaways that we wanted to, to share with you. Um, the first one is really to, to have a look at the entire ecosystem. Uh, and so I said it already, but I really wanted to, to repeat it. Um, you can find a lot of unexpected value either in the application suite available from Odoo that you didn't expect to implement, but all of a sudden you can easily add it to your stack and create value in a one on another department. That's the case we basically we, we witness it. And, uh, and the second one is to uh, find all or, or look at all the, the, the option or the possible way to um, extend the application suite to either your supplier, either your partners. Uh, for us, that's where I think most of the added value will uh, come after the, the digital transformation. Um, the second one, and um, we say in French, I'm, I'm touching wood. Um, so far, we've been successful uh, in implementing Odoo. Uh, and I think it's mostly because we made of that digital transformation journey uh, a company uh, journey and not an IT uh, slash PMO uh, uh, journey. 
So each, and to, to give you an example, um, each and every member of the executive uh, committee uh, has an objective to make a success out of it. So we are not the only ones looking for solutions to, to make it on time, on scope, and on budget. We really have the entire organization focusing on implementing uh, the, the, the new set of tools and uh, uh, assigning the right um, people to it. And that might be obvious, huh? but in such a context, uh, the first point is really your subject matter expert, the guys working on Odoo. You won't be able to share them with uh, that project and anything else. They will just be absorbed by that project, and so you won't see them anymore. So that, that has to be uh, uh, crystal clear. Um, and finally, last but not least, um, something that was really uh, important for us, as you have seen, basically, we want to migrate all departments within Odoo, which basically brings a lot of different scenarios. Where do we start with? Um, and initially, we had a plan that was discussed with Odoo, but quite quickly, we basically, we, 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 we struggled in implementing it. And we said, okay, Let's put that on hold. Let's take a few weeks to really deep dive all the different scenarios with the pro and the cons. Um, uh, and, and out of that, we ended up with a different implementation scenario than the one that was initially foreseen. And hopefully we did that um, because that, that has avoided us a lot of struggles. I'm not even sure we would be able to, to we would have been able to, to finalize the implementation with the initial scenario. So really take the time to look at all the available scenario and choose the one that sustainable for your organization and that will create the most uh, added value. That was it. <laughs> Are there eventual questions? And I'm not the one that will bring the, the micro. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have a question on your phase two. You mentioned that it's ongoing and planned for um, April, right? 9th of April, 9th yes. 9th of April. So I don't know if you have the answer already, but have you looked at um, ways to keep your purchasing database up to date? I don't know how many suppliers or vendors you work with, and how do you plan <coughs> to have uh, per, um, purchasing uh, database as an article database prices purchasing prices up to date in Odoo. But it's quite uh, not quite easy. But uh, the idea is to <coughs> say we we only keep the master of one particular type of data in one system, yeah. and so for everything that has been implemented uh, within Odoo, we say it's Odoo, and the data is then integrated and synchronized with the remaining legacy systems. So there is no dual maintenance. Everything happens in Odoo, but we had some work in building integration with, uh, between Odoo and the remaining legacy systems. And let's say, uh, so I'm talking specifically about the su your suppliers, because as I assume you purchase the elements of the kitchen from suppliers. Yes, yes. but it's the same. The project metadata is also transferred. Uh, synchronized. You, you managed to synchronize Odoo database with your supplier databases. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And with how many suppliers have you managed to do it? We have very few, so that's a good thing for us. We more closely with uh, two suppliers for okay. the, the okay. fixtures, uh, one for the kitchen, one for the wardrobes. Uh, for the appliances, there are about uh, 20, 30 different ones. And the last question, I'm sorry, <laughs> taking the airspace. We, through which interface have you managed to synchronize the databases? To, to which? Through which interface? How does the data synchronization work between you and the suppliers? So we have uh, added a middleware, basically, between Odoo and the remaining legacy systems. Uh, and we, we work with uh, uh, Azure, um, I would say, to connect data between Odoo and the remaining legacy systems. If I can just ask people that are leaving if they can keep their voices down to not disturb the, the other conference taking place in the, uh, in the room next to us. Hi, I saw you had a planning view um, that's coming out on the 9th of April. Um, how do you tackle the differences between like a, a first installation um, and the skill level required for a specific kitchen, the skills you have, the, the people you have available, the, um, the different cars you have available, and then like the individual 
um, recurrences, the second visit, the third visit, the fitting of the of the tabletops, etc. How do you tackle that in in the planning view? Because I, I saw it very simple, but like we are we have a similar customer, and for us it's like a a completely more super complex uh, article because yeah we need to we need to inst do 75 installations per week, and the planning is is terrible. So um, for me, there are two points there. I think the, the tool will never fully replace the human. So as you see, you can, for example, drag and drop one intervention from one fitter to another. But if you drop it from one guy that was foreseen to go to a stand uh, to a guy that was currently working in the Luxembourg, that won't make any sense. So that's why uh, here Evelyn showed the map yes. where you have ah. the two, the two oh. level of details. You have the area and you have the availability. So you will need the guy operating or reassigning a task to look at both and then do the right match. The tool won't do that automatically for you. So you're using the tool as a, um, a mapping of the planning, but you're not using it for the planning itself, I think. Uh, you, you, first of all, you, it, it builds you a recommendation. So it's for all the intervention foreseen in the location, it, it generates a proposal, but then you can still adapt it. Okay, thank you. Hello. Um, Hello. How long did it take for you uh, before you get a result that could really benefit your operations? Um, so the, the first go live, huh, which was about the, the retail uh, sector, has brought added value. Um, and what surprised me the most is these people are now expecting the rest of the organization to move to Odoo. So I would say we have created added value within the retail uh, sector, and so because whenever they need to uh, assign the project from one sales associate to another, to check something with the shop manager, to have a, um, I would say, a, a change in their mindset, yeah, to look at the dashboard, see what they need to do, etc. So we created added value, but not yet the amount that I expect. Um, so I think the, the biggest value will come from the second go live on the 9th of April, and I expect, I would say, one to two months to, to stabilize really the operations. So. Um, I don't really answer the, the question, I think. And, but and <laughs> when did you start working on uh, Odoo development implementation? So say? we started on mm. March uh, 20... The implementation. The but implementation. We, we did a gap analysis yeah. uh, six months ago, uh, approximately six months ago, to analyze all uh, the business and to check if wha how Odoo can reply to our uh, needs. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anton Wouters. Uh, one question, not regarding uh, Odoo, but the, strat the implementation strategy that you, that you have used. Um, I'm talking here about to, to make sure that the people that are supposed to use the, the technology and the system are effectively uh, using and, ad and adopting the new uh, solution and the new way of working. Um, so here, I think we were really helped um, the good with what we call the academy department. So the good news is the, the kitchen business is something that requires a lot of training because to, to design properly a kitchen, you cannot be do that out of the box. So we really have a, de a department that is dedicated to training people. Um, the, the sales associates are used to be trained. So basically, we involve them in our process and they retrain all the sales associates to Odoo. Um, but so we had the people, we had kind of the organization to support such a move. Um, but it's a very good question because, for example, on the second phase, uh, we need to train almost, almost uh, 450 uh, associates of Find different kind, uh, sales associate that will have additional functionalities, the logistic, warehouse management, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and that has a one month impact because the solution will be made available, will be finalized by Odoo much before the go live. But we need to take one month just to train all the associates to to Odoo to make sure they will be able to use it properly. And, and before the training, did you face any resistance from people uh, saying that? Uh, I liked the way I, I was doing uh, things before and, uh, and I don't want to change? No, 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 that's hopefully uh, they were all, we had so much struggles with, I would say, so much pains uh, with the exchange of information between departments uh, that one cannot understand the reality of the other, that everyone was absolutely looking forward uh, the implementation of that strategy. Thank you. Okay, we have time for one last quick question. A quick one, who has a quick one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
le pauvre. Voilà. Who helped you with the implementation? Was it Odu directly or did you have a partner with you? Uh, so the question is, do, do we work with an integrator or straight with Odoo? That's right. Yeah. We do work straight with Odoo. Straight with Odoo, okay. And I would say, uh, honestly, that that was also uh, something that um, for us was, uh, was important and relevant because we, but there is a lot at stake here. Uh, we, we plan on migrating the entire company to Odoo and the investment for a company like us is really uh, consequent as well. And so making sure that we would work straight with Odoo, that gave us some confidence is, okay, they will do everything that's required to, to, to make it work. Um, so at the moment, that was really uh, important for us. Okay, a second question. How, um, uh, did you uh, develop specifically, w was there a lot of uh, de uh, specific developments for your project or was it standard? So there, there is a lot. Uh, actually, if you compare uh, the amount of line of code developed versus what we expected to develop, we are on track. So I would say we have uh, plenty of customization. Uh, so far, it's about, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 30,000 lines of code, to give you an idea. Um, but we are on track versus what was expected. At the end of the, the, um, the implementation, it should be around 50,000 lines, okay. roughly. Thank you. I invite the ones who still have questions to discuss with yeah, Maximilien we can and Evelyn uh, upstairs so that we don't disturb uh, the other conference, the other, other room. Many I'm easy thanks. to find, I'm in the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.